Scott Kelby here and we're going to do a little retouch on a car. I'm not going to go through the entire retouch because it usually takes me about a half an hour to 45 minutes to do a car, really to do it right. But I want to give you the workflow and kind of the ideas and techniques behind it so you'll, you'll see where we are. This is a, a Corvette 2014 that I shot in Phoenix a few weeks ago. And uh, sadly, that's not how it, it, it came out of the camera. <laughs> Here's the original right here. Let me make sure it is. Yep, that's the original untouched there. So not terrible, but I, I want to point out what the problems are. <laughs> well, the floor. <laughs> uh, this bounce card here. And uh, mostly reflections. Uh, some of the reflections here are pretty pretty harsh. Yep, yep that's uh, some of my friends hanging out in the studio watching us. And uh, you can see overhead lights here, all kinds of little specks and junk and garbage uh, everywhere. On the floor, down here. Uh, this whole thing is just a mess. And uh, then you've got things here, here, here. More lights from the ceiling. There's junk. Uh, you can decide to get rid of that probably, even though that's actually seeing the actual part of the car through there. But, you know, there's quite a lot of, of bad stuff going on here. So uh, we're going to work to get rid of all of it. And there's, again, a number of different ways to do this. I'm just going to show you how, how uh, at least one way I do it. All right, we're going to start off. We're in Photoshop CC here, and here's our reference there. It's going to look like that when we're done, if all goes well. First thing we have to do is get rid of this bounce card. Uh, there's a number of different ways to do it. Here's one way is to draw a thin rectangle right beside it where there's no bounce card. Go to Free Transform, okay, Command-T on Mac or Control-T on PC. Drag it over, and well, that's gone. And then uh, let's see. We need to make this a little wider because the uh, the cropping is pretty bad on the car here. The, the My composition is not, not very good. Let's go to uh, canvas size. First, let's grab the color right on the edge over here. So whatever color that is, that's now our foreground color. So when I go to canvas size right here, and I use this little grid to say add the space just on this side. We'll add maybe two inches. And it's going to use that foreground color I just sampled. Click OK. And it kind of adds that in. It doesn't look real good. So we'll steal uh, some of this here. Same little trick. Go to Free Transform. Drag it over. All right, so you got kind of that. Now, just as a shortcut, I would normally grab this. Right? Press Command-J on Mac or Control-J on PC to put just that little piece up on its own layer. Then we can flip it upside down. Go flip vertical. So it matches up the tones a little better and just drag it down here. And you can see we're getting pretty close. There we go. All right, and then I'll press Command E on Mac or Control E on PC to merge those down to one layer. Now I got this piece of junk hanging out here. Um, you could use whatever you want. You could just paint over it. You could use the clone stamp tool. I'll show you a little trick if you want that'll help. If you use the rubber stamp tool over here, just make a hole on the end. Just kind of cut a little hole there. Then do the same thing. Cut a little hole on this side, just right through there. Heck, don't copy the junk over like I just did. Just make a little hole. There we go, on both of that. All right, so there's a hole. Because if you make a hole, then you can use the patch tool. The patch tool um, works like the lasso tool. You just draw a selection around what you want to remove. Click inside, drag it someplace else, let go. And it's gone. So that's you make a hole in it. If you don't make a hole in it like I did on both ends to where it's kind of an island, then it smears in the ends and you wind up with a new problem. Now you can still, it's still not pretty, so let's just do this. Let's get the clone stamp tool. Let's go down here and just kind of, I'm using a nice soft brush and kind of just lightening those edges a little bit, painting a little white into there. Whoops, I just painted a little on the wheels. That's not exactly the idea, but a real soft brush, that way I can get those kind of hard edges gone. Something like that, and maybe clean that little line up right there. Okay, we're getting in the ballpark. So at least we kind of have the white background. Now, if you really want a solid, solid, solid white background, here's another thing you could do. Add a new layer. Fill it with solid white. So press the letter D, then X. That makes your foreground color white. Fill it with solid, absolute solid, pure white. Lower the opacity a little so you can see what's going on. And then hit the layer mask button. Now your layer mask is in white, you're going to paint with a brush tool in black at 100%, and then you're just basically going to go paint the car back in. And that way, when you're done, everything around the car will be absolutely, positively solid white. 
you just have to be a little more careful than I'm doing here and you know take your time to paint it in. Now it doesn't look right yet because our opacity is down at 67% on this layer. So I would be real careful and paint it all in nicely, not like I'm doing here real fast. And paint over the windshield and all that. And this isn't too bad considering I'm just using a trackpad, right? I'm not using a tablet even put my tablet up in here. So when you get pretty close, raise the opacity back up, and you wind up with 100% white all the way around in your car in the middle. But we didn't we didn't go that route, but that is another way that you could conceivably do it. Okay. Um, I always try to fix the thing that I think is the biggest problem to me. And what's driving me crazy, of course, is this big nightmare that we have of this reflection. Now, I, I spent about an hour, and by, by I, I mean like a team of four of us, <laughs> spent about an hour getting rid of the reflections in the car as many as we could. What you're seeing right here is that is a white seamless background over on this side. So you could kind of, it would hide all the reflections. There's a ton of reflections. When you shoot a car, it's like shooting into a mirror. Everything shows up. And that's why you're seeing our friends over here. So here's one way that you might deal with this. There are a number of ways to deal with this, including cloning and using the healing brush and all that and painting, but I'll, I'll give you one. Get the pen tool. And we're gonna draw the pen tool over the area that we want to fix. I'm gonna go with this area right here where you can see everybody. Let me just move that up a little bit. It wasn't the best uh, selection there. We're gonna click, hold, and drag, and it makes it curve. Click, hold, and drag makes it curve. Now when I have to change directions, I'm going to option click on Mac or all click on PC and it lets me just change directions without doing anything crazy with my curve. All right, we'll curve around this way. As long as all our curves are bending in the same direction, the pen tool stays happy. All right, we'll go down here. I'm just gonna curve around here like that. We're gonna go all the way over to here. I'm gonna go down here. I'm taking a few little liberties with the uh, the shape here since we're gonna take a lot of liberties in just a moment. Click, hold, and drag and pull that curve out. And then click, hold, and drag here too. And when we get back to the point where we started, a little circle shows up. It says you've come full circle and click. Now this is kind of a mess here, so I'm gonna add an extra point. Hold the command key and pull that down. I'll do the control key on PC. All right, so I kind of have a somewhat of a decent path. If you want to go around here and fix it up, I think that you probably should. <laughs> I didn't make the perfect path here, as you can see. But you can add points by just moving your cursor over there. All right, hey, get closer than I did, but this is just to give you an idea. All right, we're going to add a new layer. You're going to press Command Return on Mac or Control Enter on PC. That makes it into a selection. We need to save that selection, so go... Select, save selection, front of car, or front panel, or whatever you want to call it. And now we can deselect. Now let's go choose a piece of the car that you like. So this looks all pretty good here. Let's take everything from like here, all this nice piece of car reflection here, this whole door panel, and let's copy it. Just copy into memory. So then, whoops, have to go to the background layer before you do that. Then hit copy. There we go. Or, cop or we were copying nothing. Okay, now we're going to go to this area that we selected earlier. Remember we saved that selection? Let's go get it back. Select. Load selection. Remember, front of car brings our selection back. Voila! We're going to go to the, um, under the edit menu, to paste special. We're going to choose paste into. So if I don't choose paste into, it's just going to paste it on top. But if I choose paste into, it's going to paste that chunk of car in our memory into that shape like this. And voila, your car is fixed. Well, here's what it does. It's not a thousand percent, but what it did was it took actual texture from the car and covered up that awful area that is reflected. Now that you see it, you go, oh, I know it was kind of fakey, but I bet when you're looking here, you didn't realize it, right? When you were looking at the first car, you didn't go, that front has been faked. But now that you know it, of course, it, it's, it has been faked. But I would do a better job with the selection stuff, but that's a quick way to fix that. All right, let's just merge all this together. And obviously, I did not need that extra empty layer. I forgot that when you paste into a selection, it automatically creates a layer. Some other things that I would do to clean this bad boy up, because it needs some stuff. Look, you can see the... Uh, Headlamp, the lamp from the top of the uh, of the studio, 
Get the uh, clone stamp tool. Let's make it smaller and kind of get rid of that and just clone that out of there. Shouldn't be too hard. Or should it? Okay. That's gone pretty well. Get rid of some of this little stupid junk. That little reflection there. You can see another light reflected there. And so this, the rest of this is a lot of this stuff. Going here and cleaning up this little stray junk. Cleaning up this stray junk over here. I'm using the clone stamp tool for all of this. But when it starts to come to getting spots and stuff, and there's a weird spot over here, um, you might want to switch to the regular healing brush tool and just click it. Just option click one time in a clear spot and then move over these spots that I just created and get rid of those. So you'll spend a lot of time on a car even though this one was very clean, it had been detailed and everything, you still wind up getting all kinds of junk. Look at all this stuff down here just from the wear and tear, even though it's a 2014. It didn't roll off the factory this way. It's been driven in traffic and stuff. All right, so you'll have to go through here and get rid of all this junk, every little bit that you see, which is, is a pain, I know. Then over here, look, there's a lot of nasty stuff up here. You're going to have to get rid of that. Let's make our clone stamp tools go to our clone stamp tool. Let's kind of go in here and get rid of this junk and this junk. And again, you're going to take more time than I'm doing with this. I'm kind of whizzing through this uh, just to give you the idea. See that little reflection? You can't have that. So we're going to get rid of that. That was pretty sloppy. You're going to do a better job than that, I am certain. Uh, let's see what else. You're going to get rid of all this junk the same way. I need these little weird reflections and stuff. I'd rather just have that be all pretty much solid black than, you know, and that little door reflection, junk on the door. There's all kinds of little stuff throughout the car if you look around. Um, this stuff. I'd probably get rid of that in there. Let's see what else. I mean, you're just going around the car and look at stuff. It gets pretty nasty back here. I think you certainly want to fix this, get rid of this. Just clone that, option click, get rid of this stuff. If you're afraid you're going to spill over onto something, get the pen tool and just draw yourself a path where you want it to go. You want it to look like this. Draw where you want it to go. Press Command Return on Mac or Control Return. Excuse me, Control Enter on PC. That way, when you paint, you don't have to worry about it anymore. There's no way for you to accidentally erase parts of the car. Because it'll only paint inside your selected area. Kind of a little bit of a hack job, but you get the idea. Oops, a little junk there. Now, a couple finishing touches. Uh, a couple things that I like to do here. Oh, it's looking quite a bit better already, eh? So um, I use a plug-in to bring out some detail. Uh, first thing I do is I go Filter, Nick Software, and I go to Color Effects Pro 4, one of the most popular plugins out there, I would believe, part of the Nick collection from Google now. I would go to Pro Contrast. Pro Contrast has a really nice uh, dynamic contrast or strong contrast or auto-enhanced. Looks pretty good, look. Go to auto enhance it kind of just sets a nice contrast i just choose one of the presets by the way let me show you how you get to the presets you choose pro contrast and then you click on this little thing this drawer pops out we hit auto enhance here's a before and after that looks good we'll click ok give you just a second to apply the auto enhance all right that's better merge it down then let's go and we're going to choose back to Nick Software. We could have done this, by the way. You can apply more than one filter at one time, but I'm going to go this way. We're going to go to Tonal Contrast. We're going to go to the little presets. We're going to choose the second one called Strong. And it looks terrible if you really apply it to the whole car. It looks really mottled and really funky and weird. But if you hide it behind a mask and just apply it where you want it, it, it works much better. As you will see in just a moment, please. All right, see how it looks kind of, look what it did. It added all kinds of, ugh. So hide that. Option, click on the layer mask icon right down here at the bottom of the layers palette. So it's, it's, it's there. It's just hidden behind this black mask. If it's black, you need to get a brush and paint in white. Now, what I'll do is come in here and get, add some, de add, add some detail in here. We'll go here and just like bring out the, uh, the brake all that all the brake stuff in there and the wheel now you notice how it changed color got a little yellowish if that happens go over to the layers panel and change your blend mode from normal to luminosity watch that yellow area when i choose luminosity ciao it's gone so it's darker but it loses the yellow all right and i'll bring out a little bit of detail maybe right here in the side of the wheel i'm not going to go under the wheel too much or if i do 
I'm going to lower the opacity so you just see a little of it because it's going to be kind of dirty and junky down there. Yeah, I wish I had done that. Undo. There we go. Let's go to the other wheel. Back to 100% opacity here. Bring out some extra detail in that wheel. And other places that you might want to bring out extra detail are um, in the right there in the lights. Maybe a little right in there. There you go. Oh, I can see something else that has to be done. All right, in here in the grill work, bring out some extra detail using that. So what you're, you're just what you're showing is what that other filter did. And if you want to zoom in real tight with a nice small brush, you can go right in here and add extra detail to the logo. Look how that's coming out right in there. Just brings that extra depth and dimension there using that little finishing touch type stuff. But even right there, look at the difference. See, it's doing more than you think. All right, so that helps. You don't want to see a couple things are missing. we got to fix before we finish this bad boy off. Um, let's go up here. Look at that reflection right there in the uh, rear view. That's got to go. Got to go. And then there's a little bit over here. It's got to go as well. I'm really kind of slopping through this, as you can see. Hey, you know what else it needs? Uh, two things, I think we can finish this, or three things. Uh, let's go to the camera raw filter again. Let's go camera raw filter. I'm going to pull back the highlights because the highlights are really bright. Let me pull them back a little so we can get some more detail on the top of the car and in the windshield here. Let's watch and see what that does. Yeah, it's bringing a lot of detail back, but unfortunately, it's crushing the detail in the background and everything. So what we do is this. How about if we go to the adjustment brush, lower the highlights all the way down, and then, whoops, that's too big a brush. And we'll just paint over the this part of the car. Now, we better turn on auto mask because I can see it's spilling pretty much everywhere. Let's just pull that back a little bit. That way you're starting to see some more, get rid of some of these bad highlights, let you see a little more detail. Because it was really bright, the light from above. The whole thing, car is lit from above. That's really, really, really sloppy. But you're going to do better than that. You're going to take your time and do it right. I'm just going to get rid of the spillage here, holding the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on PC, getting rid of the spillage. But you can see that you need to be a lot, the brush doesn't need to be quite as soft and stuff. But and let's find out how much highlights we really need to pull back here. Let's just go look at that again. Hold on. Might have crushed those highlights a bit too much. All right, there we go. Something like that. It needs a little bit of bringing back, but eh, I'm not sure how much I like that. Should have done it earlier on. I think that would have actually made quite a difference if I had done it earlier on. And then uh, lastly, the whole thing just looks like it could be a little darker. The car was midnight blue, so I'm just going to cheat, duplicate the layer, go to multiply mode, which is going to make everything really dark, and lower the opacity around uh, 30, 35%, something like that. To get us to our final image there, maybe a little sharpening. Oh, yeah. Unsharp mask. Let's sharpen this bad boy to death. 121 and 3 to get us our final image. Now, again, we did this in just a few minutes. I would normally take, you know, I would do it, you know, much more detail than this. But anyway, there you go. I had some people asking, how did you do that? How do you do your post-processing? What's your kind of workflow? It's something along those lines right there. Hope you found it helpful.